Dawnbringer Chronicles Shadows and Lies We are close, said Scala, hauling herself up onto the slick shelf of obsidian and extending a hand to aid her companion. Valexia, dangling by one hand over a hundred-metre drop, refused the gesture. She swiveled her body, taking in the impressive view. The liar's teeth spread out beneath her, the canvas of shadow mountains illuminated by the faintest sheen of luminance, a by-product of the fungal forests that covered their flanks. It was rare in Olgu for anything to be so vibrant and of course this shimmering vision of beauty was nothing more than a dark illusion. Unwary travellers seeking to follow the faint splashes of colour would find themselves ensnared in the filament spools of sentient mixospore clusters, condemned to a slow and horrible death. Not an easy ascent, Valexia said. I can see why this place was chosen. Future thrall serves well enough for now, Scala said. We never meet in any location more than once, and in any case, Hagnar's spies are swift enough to punish complacency. To question the High Oracle's ascension is to become their prey. I know this better than you can imagine, Phylexia muttered, effortlessly swinging herself up onto solid ground. I have witnessed Marathai Kane's version of justice first-hand. We are all here for the same reasons, are we not? One would hope. Scala's expression was impassive. They left the narrow shelf of rock behind. Valexia followed her companion along a narrow path hewn through the glass-textured stone, so dark it seemed at points as though they were walking across a plunging abyss. The path was barely illuminated by streaks of lichen that glowed a soft purple. Not a natural trail, but a cleverly arranged one. Only an elf's keen eyes could have caught the subtle patterns, and even then, only if they were searching for it. These watchposts were employed during the Cathtra duel, said Scala, to observe the enemy's movements through the old Gorthy valleys. Most have been abandoned for a long time. The others will be waiting for us ahead. Say nothing until I give you leave. Valexia nodded. She had waited for this moment for a long time. She would not ruin it now with a foolish breach of protocol. The path wound down in a tight spiral, so narrow that even the lithe elves had to turn sideways to progress, easing themselves through a narrow crevasse as sheets of icy rain lashed down on them from above. Eventually, they entered an amphitheatre, carved out of the mountain itself, with an empty bowl at its centre. Winding channels were carved into the stone, all of them leading to the shallow bowl. Polexia knew this had once been a shrine to the bloody-handed one, designed to host displays of ritual bloodletting. On three sides rose steep walls, riddled with shadowy alcoves. The black shroud of the Olgian sky hung low and ominous above their heads. You bring a stranger to our gathering. The voice echoed around the chamber so strangely that Valexia could not place its location. Scala fell to one knee. I do, Kronseer. She has earned my trust. She protected me from the high oracles and interrogators at great risk to herself. The voice drew a rasping breath. It might have been laughter. Trust is a fool's comfort, it said. I employ you, wise one, said Valexia, grasping the hilts of her scienza and inclining her head, as close a gesture to submission as it was possible for a self-respecting canite to endorse. Word of the crone heralds and their defiance has reached even the highest corridors of Hagnar. There are many who cannot accept the blasphemies preached by Marathai Cain, nor the persecution of those who express any flicker of doubt. Silence. Then figures began to emerge from the alcoves, robed in black and wearing feathered masks of silver, 
their forms half concealed by the gloom. Do you wish to glimpse the truth, Alexei of Hagna? came the voice, no longer accompanied by that maddening echo. Perched upon a sharp ledge, a dozen metres above their heads, was a spindly, pale-skinned figure. Long white hair obscured the being's face, and wings of sable feathers protruded from bony shoulders. It clutched a staff capped with an angular rune in the shape of an eye, the mark of Morai Heg, a forgotten god from a bygone age, once more inexplicably imbued with importance. You are she, then, said Volexia, running her tongue along her lower lip, the fabled Kronzia, the voice of dissent and disquiet, she who denies the holy truth of Marathi Cain and preaches dissension against her. You are Crethusa. The figure simply gazed down at her, cocking its head in a unsettlingly avian manner. Volexia's smile widened. At last she hissed. With a contemptuous flick of her head, she dismissed the magic of her Kragath war mask, and layers of illusion peeled from her like shed skin, revealing her true form. Her serpentine tail shivered in anticipation, and she let loose an ululating cry, brandishing the glaive that appeared in her hands, as if summoned from the ether. Shadows plummeted from the sky above, twisting in midair and spreading leathery wings to halt their descent. Two dozen masked kinari, javelins in hand, and aimed to pierce the heart of the Kronseer. I have been searching for you for a long time, Alexia said. I know, Crethusa. You are a gifted hunter. Alizinia. The Malusai's expression of triumph froze on her face. How was this possible? Only her broodkin knew her true name. Malusai did not reveal such things to outsiders. One of Marathi's most ruthless, scathe-born spies, the winged elf continued, skillful, cruel, merciless, and overconfident. Take her, snapped Alenzia. Before she could even finish the order, havoc broke loose. Emerging from alcoves along the rocky wall came blunt snouts of repeating crossbows, riddling the hovering canary with missiles. The scathe-born fought back, hurling their own javelins at their ambushes. Corpses rained down upon the floor of the ritual chamber, their blood spilling into the narrow channels and filling the central font. Alenzia cursed as another heart-renderer, spiralled towards the ground with a scream, crashing with a bone-jarring impact. Figures charged at her from the shadows, her glaive spun and danced in her hands, opening the throats of two traitors, and stabbing through the belly of another. The Malusai could have screamed in frustration. Despite all of her careful planning, despite her exhausting reconnaissance of this mountainside temple and all its hidden passages, somehow the Kronseer had concealed a cadre of heretic followers that outnumbered her scathe-born. Though the Canari slew two elves for each of their own losses, the enemy was more than willing to accept that ratio. More fell, pierced a dozen times by well-aimed bolts, or blasted by sorcerous fire. Scala came, leaping at Alenzia, a twin sciencer slashing wildly. The Malusai blocked with a two-handed grip, and slammed the haft of her weapon into the elf's chest, driving the air from her lungs, and dropping her to the floor. Traitor, she hissed at the witch-elf, you will know an eternity of suffering for your heresy. She drew forth all of her hatred and rage at this unfolding disaster, channeling that black fury through the ensorcelled steel of her glaive, and plunging the weapon's point through Scala's chest. The elf screamed, writhing and shuddering as a patina of icy rime crept across her flesh, sealing her in a crystal tomb. The scathed touch, even as her own visions of glory collapsed around her, Alenzia took bitter satisfaction in her foe's suffering. An icy coil of blackness seized the Malusai around the throat, and others wrapped around her serpentine torso, sapping her strength and clouding her vision. She struggled, hissing, but to no avail. Her weapon tumbled from her nerveless hands as hooded figures ran forwards to bear her to the ground. Crethusa's winged form loomed over Alenzia as she lay stricken on the floor. The crone seer wove her fingers in a graceful pattern, 
and the loose eye felt the magical fetters binding her constrict, locking her arms behind her spine. Do not resist, Crethusa said. Curse you, shrieked Lindsay. Her magnificence will avenge me, you wretched traitor. You will join this deceiver here in eternal agony. She nodded towards the crystalline statue that was Scalar, its mouth locked in a silent scream. You name her deceiver, said Crethusa. But was it not you who came here under false pretenses to apprehend me? Morith I came, wills it. Scala knew, of course. I showed her. I told her, too, of the fate that awaited her this night. She chose to serve the crone goddess regardless. Do you know why? She was a deluded fool. No, Crethusa shook her head. She possessed rare insight. She knew that the weave of fate cannot be undone. Destiny comes for us all to fight it. That is foolishness. You must know I will give you nothing, heretic, Valencia said. Crethusa leaned upon her staff. You do not have to speak a word, Valencia. There are other ways to glean what I need to know about Marathi's plans. Coils of cold metal locked painfully tight around Valencia's wrists, and she felt herself dragged away into the waiting mouth of an alcove, tail lashing as she shrieked her rage into the uncaring darkness. Screaming machines, gears in motion, industrial and heat, alarm explosion, heavy metal slamming, the rhythm it tends, a symphony of chaos, a soul descends. Yeah.